How do we get a date, um, pin down a date at which the Arctic will see its first free ice summer? There's still a big range and it depends on the model that you're looking at. All the models basically show us that at some point summer sea ice will be lost. So it's tricky to forecast. So different models have come, have came, come up with different dates spanning 2005 to after 2100. Most climate models suggest it's likely to happen around the middle of the century 2050. So, uh, but there's, there's, there's other factors that complicate matters. For example, how, you know, what, what is the level of our admissions? Do, do we get, look at the worst case, RCP 8.5, or do we really cut back our emissions? So a study in 2016 found that it, um, if we make very little effort to cut global emissions, we could see the first ice-free summer as early as 2032. This was in a 2016 study, and this is following the RCP 8.5 um, trajectory. If we limit global warming to 1.5, which is next to impossible now, that reduces the chances. So here, here's a plot here. So the, the red line here is RCP 8.5, and this is a probability of the first ice-free summer. So 2032 here in the red line, and it goes up sharply, and it, it gets close to 100 at about 2040 something here. Okay, let me um, just control minus. Let's get the whole graph in. Okay. So this is RCP 8.5, and then as you get lower emission scenarios, the probability of the first ice-free summer goes further into the future. So this is a very, you know, interesting and key graph from that 2016 study. So we're following right now, we're following the 8.5 trajectory. So this is where the model says 2032 with increasing probability higher and higher and getting almost a sure thing by say 2045, 2050, okay, on the high emissions side of things. Okay, um, the study, a study published in 2018 found that if global temperatures are limited to 1.5 C, the Arctic's unlikely to see its first ice-free summer before 2065, okay? So that's uh, this line here, that's this line here. Um, so the probability um, you know, 2065 would be here, you know, that would be 10% probability of, of seeing it. So, you know, it's very, very unlikely, but we can't hold that situation. You know, two degrees Celsius is the, is this curve here, which is surprisingly way, way faster than the 1.5. Okay, so, you know, it greatly increases. The Arctic has a one in five chance of seeing its first ice-free summer in 2035, according to the study. Uh, chances of an ice-free summer in a given year rise to one in two by 2045. That's according. So, so any, the study, whether the absolute numbers are accurate or not, it's basically, there's a huge difference. That, one, that half a degree warming makes a huge difference. And then natural variability is also a factor that um, makes things difficult. This is some of the mosaic uh, scientists moving equipment. So this is a ship here. They've got a snowmobile here. They've got some ice tractors and things here. Um, a storm is coming, so they're bringing stuff onto the ship. Okay. Um, when, you know, cyclones have a, are a big part of the natural variability. When there's a large cyclone, the sea ice disappears quickly. We saw that in 2012, the record that was set. So the, the, the current record lowest level of, Arctic, of summer sea ice in September on record is it happened in 2012 in part due to a large storm that hit the ice in August. Okay, if you remember back then, um, some of the videos that I was showing, et cetera, or some of the data. Um, Okay, now there was a landmark report on oceans and ice that was published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So that's here basically, you know, an extensive report. And I should probably talk about that in detail at some point. Um, so the whole point is to improve the models, but being realistic, it'll take at least five years for the new results from Mosaic to be implemented in the climate models, probably longer than that. 
all of the field results that are collected, and that goes from September 2019 to September uh, 2020, uh, basically, will need to be analyzed, published in peer-reviewed scientific journals, be in there for several years before they're relayed to the climate modeling community. So the, cons the Arctic sea ice is shifting so rapidly that the modelers are likely not able to keep up with the pace of change. If an ice-free summer does occur, um, 2035 even, there's, you know, it, it, it basically there's not much time left. It could be that reality overtakes our ability to make predictions. I still think, you know, we've got a good shot at it by, you know, 2022, 2023, 2025 you know, the first uh, September anyway, being being ice free. You know, and they talk about the repercussions, they talk about, they spend time, interestingly, they talk about commercial shipping opening up, they talk about the, so that fa new faster routes between the Atlantic and the Pacific, they talk about the effect on marine animals, polar bears, whales, etc. Um, and so the Arctic ecosystem, right, there's quite a bit on there. Um, but they also, and then they mention here that, you know, a growing field of research suggests that changes to sea ice could be affecting weather elsewhere, particularly in mid-latitude regions. Well, this is, this is a no-brainer, really. Of course it is doing it. It's, it's, slow, it's slowing the jet streams, making them wavier, may causing extreme weather events, etc. And here's my quote. Um, I first said this, you know, almost a decade ago. And here's my quote, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. I see it all the time still. Um, and it talks about the extreme weather events happening and so on and so forth. So, okay, so, so that's basically the gist of it. Now, in this article, um, there's a number of good links. Um, you know, there's a number of active links, right? That you, and uh, some of, I just want to show you what some of them are. So this one here, this was an article... Most of them are carbon brief links because it's a carbon brief report. But here's here's a post. How predictable is the first ice-free Arctic summer from 2016? Um, and I believe I discussed, uh, you know, this. I've discussed this report in some previous videos. I mean, the gist of it is that um, let's just go to the uh, the uh, main findings of this. Okay, so it basically, uh, so the model, here we go. Our sim so there's simulations from this 2016 study. Um, it put the first ice-free Arctic summer at some point between 2032 and 2053 for the, this is for the high emission pathway or the RCP 8.5 pathway for a 4.5 pathway later, 2043 to 2058. Um, and, but the point is, is it's showing that it, it was arguing that we might not be able to narrow down the prediction of an ice-free Arctic to less than 20 years due to natural variability, or to less than 25 years when we factor in the uncertainty from different emission pathways. Okay, so this is, you know, this is the weather, this is the, you know, whether it's an, an ENSO, El Nino Southern Oscillation, um, you know, what, what the circulation patterns are in the oceans and atmosphere, you know, in a given um, melt season, um, things like that. So that's what it's arguing, and I, I don't think, I don't believe that. Um, this is another article linked to the pre first one, you know, saying 1.5 could cut the risk of an ice-free Arctic. And this is where the image, this image first came in, okay, the probability of the occurrence. Um, of ice-free conditions, um, you know, and I showed you this. So this is this is where that article originated from. And there's also a QA about question and answer about how Arctic warming is linked to the polar vortex and other extreme weather. So this talks more. This is an excellent article. If you haven't read it, it was it, it came out about a year ago, and it talks about how the polar you know, it talks about the jet stream connections to the to the Arctic. So there's a lot of good data in here. There's a lot of good information, um, and uh, talking about the wavier jet stream. So I think I'll. I've got a very persistent cat who seems to be trying to destroy the house. So I think I'll end here. And thank you for listening. So um, my best guess for 
complete loss of Arctic sea ice in a September would I'd have to go for something like you know I'd probably go for something like 2025 you know sometime within the next five years you know maybe the next few years but it's really there's so many parameters and there is that negative feedback that I've discussed in the past that as the ice gets um, as the you know if the ice last remnants of ice are circling around the North Pole you know they could stick around there for uh, you know for a period of time because the sunlight angle is so low there but um, you know will it be will the amount of ice there be less than a million square kilometers or will it be larger I mean you know there's a lot lot of different questions but uh, anyway thank you for uh, listening once again bye for now and uh, I should just give another plug here for my website. Check out paulbeckwith.net. Uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter um, at Paul at Paul H Beckwith. You know, find my find my Facebook feed, find me on Instagram, etc. And really, you know, help me try to get these messages out. And uh, also consider donating to support my work. Okay, thanks again. Bye for now.